Recently, a group of people from all over the globe converged in Canada to discuss their shared belief system that the Earth is not a sphere. To travel to the conference, some of them boarded airplanes, which, fortunately for them, are navigated in great circle routes, calculated using accurate maps of the Earth based on geodesic surveying data, and are guided by global positioning satellites orbiting the Earth. And, using technology developed by the process of science, they recorded the events and uploaded them to YouTube on the World Wide Web. The conference is called the Flat Earth International Conference, FEIC, but I prefer to call it the Mystery Pseudoscience Theater. So let's take a front row seat and hear what they have to say. I'll try not to interrupt. And welcome to FE 2018 Canada, your Master of Ceremonies, Rick Hummer. But what I can tell you is, I feel sorry for Neil deGrasse Tyson. I feel sorry for these guys that are locked into the programming, that are ignoring the science that's been tested and proven. It's not a ball. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it right there. I guess I lied. I'm going to have to interrupt. What science are we ignoring? Maybe he'll tell us. But to accept the flat earth, you have to ignore all sorts of science. Even science that you can see for yourself, like lunar eclipses, objects getting hidden by the horizon, the two celestial poles appearing to rotate in opposite directions, the variation of star visibility throughout the seasons, and equinox, sunrise, and sunset, just to name a few. Flat Earthers have no valid, testable explanations for any of that. And of course, mainstream science does, and it perfectly fits the heliocentric model. So let's see what we are ignoring. The formula they gave you, eight inches times the mileage squared, does not work. It's observable. Test it. Observe. Test it. Observe. Collect the data. I don't know about you guys, man. When I start adding up numbers, I get tired of adding up the same numbers that don't work for a formula that we've been given as a programming device that when you realize it's not round at all, it's flat. Okay, here we go. How many times do I have to say it? They are using the wrong calculation for what they are trying to measure and doing the tests wrong in other ways. The 8 inches per mile square calculation does not calculate how much an object will be hidden behind the curve of the Earth. It is just a rough approximation of the drop from the horizontal. That is, if you drew a horizontal line out from where you are standing and measure down from that line to the surface at a given distance, that is what the calculation is giving you. That is not a number that tells you really anything important and certainly doesn't tell you how much a distant object should be hidden behind the horizon. And not only is it measuring the wrong thing, but it has another glaring flaw in that it ignores the viewer height. The higher you go, the farther away the horizon is, so you cannot use a calculation that ignores the viewer height when doing a line of sight test. For example, if you were doing a test across 10 miles of water, the eight inches per mile squared calc ignores the viewer height and gives a result of 66 feet. 10 times 10 is 100. Times 8 inches is 800 inches. Divided by 12 inches is 66.6 feet. But that does not mean that an object will be hidden by 66 feet. That is not what it measures. And if you are just 10 feet above the water, the correct calculation tells us that only 25 feet will be hidden by the curve. That's a big difference. And add to that other errors flat earthers make in these tests, such as disregarding refraction and getting the distance wrong, or even ignoring the height of the target. And it is clear that they are not doing it right. When you do it right, you always see what is expected. Boats, buildings, and mountains hidden at the bottom by the horizon, by the correctly calculated amount. See metabunk.org curve for the correct calculation. And flat earthers don't even have a valid explanation for why objects are hidden at the bottom in the first place. Flat, water's a natural level, right? 
Is water a natural level? Yes, water is a natural level. But what causes water to go level? Water cannot do anything on its own. It needs a force acting on it. And that force causing it to go level is gravity. And since everything we observe about gravity tells us it results from mass, and the Earth has trillions of tons of mass, it follows that the force of gravity is toward the center of the Earth, and therefore water is pulled toward the center of the Earth. And level, in this context, simply means that it is perpendicular to the direction of that force. So it is curved. I have asked countless flat earthers what force they think causes water to find its level. I have yet to get an answer. And if you don't think gravity can curve water, just look at the top of a waterfall. What do you think is causing that water to bend? Yeah. Okay, how many of you flew here? Anybody? Anybody fly here? Everybody drove? All right. Next time you're in a plane, look out, try and see the curve, it's not there. But most importantly, do the tests. No, sorry, airplane altitudes are not high enough to see the curve of the horizon, except for high-altitude jets that fly much higher than a commercial airliner. And you need a wide angle of view. So that is a straw man argument. The Earth is really big, so even at airliner altitudes, you are still looking at a very small part of the Earth and at a very shallow angle. The higher you go, the farther away the horizon gets, so your viewing angle to the horizon stays very low, and it's like trying to see the curve of a hula hoop held around your head at eye level. You're just not going to be able to see it. You have to get much higher to get a big enough down angle to see the curve. Many people, including Rob Skiba, have sent balloons high enough to see it. But of course, Skiba even ignored his own evidence, calling it inconclusive. Because I can tell you in my own market, where I'm from, I'm from South Bend, Indiana. And there's a guy there, we all heard it. What you're seeing here is a mirage. What you're seeing here is a mirage, mirage. <laughs> okay, got an idea. Let's go take a boat across the water and keep Chicago in sight the whole time. Sooner or later, that mirage is gonna have to figure out where reality is, right? <laughs> Tested and proven, it's not a mirage. Wow. These guys are still confused about what a superior mirage is. You can tell by what he says that he thinks it is the kind of mirage like you see when you drive across the desert, and you see what looks like water on the road ahead, but as you approach, the water disappears. That is an inferior mirage, and it's a totally different thing that people are talking about when they're talking about the Chicago skyline. When the Chicago skyline can be viewed from about 60 miles across the lake, which is only in certain conditions, it is due to the light bending around the curve of the Earth due to the cold water. This is called refraction, and what you see when this happens is called a superior mirage. The newsman just said mirage, but it is clear from what he said that he meant superior mirage. So Hummer is confusing the two and making an equivocation fallacy. If you approach by boat, as he describes, and as Rob Skiba did in a video, there is no reason that the view of the building will disappear or will need to catch up. It will just emerge more and more from behind the curve, which is exactly what Skiba saw. And Skiba's video started from only 42 miles away, not 60. Hmm, I wonder why. And there was no indication of an unusual refraction on that day. And from that distance, he sees only the top few hundred feet of the tallest buildings, exactly as predicted by the correct calculation. In fact, his video shows exactly what you expect from a curved Earth, the buildings becoming more and more visible from the top down as he approaches. Wow, these guys keep disproving themselves because they cannot understand the simple concept of refraction. They keep saying to do the tests, but they are doing them wrong and ignoring their own results. And you can easily test refraction yourself like Greater Sapien did in a video, with just a laser beam and some ice. When he moves a bowl of ice under the laser beam, you can see the light is refracted down noticeably and measurably by the cold air. And that is just with a few inches of cold air coming from the ice. Over the lake, the cold air of water will continuously bend the light over the surface between the buildings and the viewer. 
and thus easily explains why it can sometimes be seen further than expected. Some people say that superior mirages must be upside down, but that is not true. Sometimes they are upside down, and sometimes they are right side up. It depends on the particular distances and the amount of cold air involved. Well, that about does it for Mr. Hummer. Thanks for watching. I plan on debunking other speakers at this event. I hope you like this new format I'm trying out. Be sure to check out these other Flat Earth videos. And if you like this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe.